Good morning, my name is Richard. I'm with West Coast Classic Cougar. This morning we're going to start installing a top, convertible top, on a 1971 convertible. It's, uh, we're going to go from the uh, original vinyl top, we're going to go to a cloth top it, from uh, Easy On Tops, and we're here at uh, Top and Trim Upholstery in Gresham, Oregon, who's been doing it for quite a long time. And Steve's going to be the installer this morning and some of his helpers. And so uh, I'm just going to kind of turn it over to him and let him go on and do his thing. The very first thing that we're going to want to do is lay out all the parts that you've ordered. Uh, this is an easy on top, one of the best uh, manufacturers uh, in the United States. And they deal specifically with the older classic concourse type tops. Uh, this one here we're going to be uh, going from a vinyl coated top which is original factory to an upgrade. Uh, it's a stay fast. Uh, it's a good quality rich looking uh, uh, canvas and uh, it will uh, look nice on the car when it's uh, done. First thing we got here is the glass. We make sure that that's proper. Check for seams, uh, any gluing, lamination, delaminations, uh, making sure that the zipper uh, is good. Uh, we don't see any uh, uh, fraying or anything like that. And we check out the top for the canvas. And everything is all good, because now is the time to, uh, well, we have a little bit of problem here, but that's not a real big problem. This is just some leftover stuff, and we'll cut that off once we get the top up. Now we're going to turn it over and make sure that the flopper stopper are installed. And they are right here and here. And uh, the rear is reinforced for the uh, wire on and everything. This is a really nice top. And we got uh, our cable slot here. This is where we're gonna slide our cable in when we get to that point. Everything uh, looks good. What I like about uh, Easy On is they do uh, an extra step here that uh, a lot of different top manufacturers don't do. Uh, is they'll go ahead and they'll put this uh, sealer on there and then uh, dielectrically seam that on there so uh, it helps uh, prevent uh, leaking from uh, inside the car. And then we got front wind dam and we have the wire on which is going to go across the uh, rear bow uh, with two little chrome tips and I see they're right here and they look all good and we got all the parts then we have the quarter pads very nicely done like that here and they look right and here's your main pads and they look good both of them and then we have the well over here, and that looks good. Should be a roll underneath here. Here it is, slot for a wire uh, that uh, takes and uh, keeps that nice and taut. And there's uh, one back here, so that once we get it in, it's going to lay as flat as humanly possible. There should be some cables, and here's the cables. We look at them, kind of inspect them real quick like here. They're great, and they're good. Aircraft uh, cable uh, with, uh, that is covered, and uh, that makes for, that's even better than what the factory offered. So that's all good. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to pop the top up about a 90 degree angle. That will give me access to the front of this uh, top. Well, 
my partner there, Craig. Uh, we've been doing this for a long, long time. I grew up in the business, so did he. And uh, there ain't too many cars that we haven't worked on or put tops on. When we're uh, taking the cars apart, we usually like to lay these out on the hood, get something to protect the front hood, especially if you got a nice paint job like this. And uh, we'll lay them out in the manner of which we take them apart. And that way there, it's kind of a no-brainer. You can kind of just walk through this thing and get everything all pulled apart. It's all good. You want to try to take these, whatever parts you're taking off, to uh, not bend them. I've seen guys take and just rip them off and they bend them and then they uh, straighten them. This is where taking a little bit of time and prying them off is the best. go ahead and inspect the tack rails being careful as not to uh, damage them oh uh, well okay we're gonna have to replace the tack rail the one thing they used back there is back in the day was aluminum you get electrolysis when you marry steel up against aluminum and uh, driving it. And uh, same thing that you would get on a boat, and that's why they have zinc plates on boats. Yep, we're going to go ahead and replace it. Now we're going to undo what we call the flopper stoppers and uh, keeps the top from lifting when you're doing 100 miles an hour. Now here is the original cable and if you remember the ones that we took out of the bag had a rubber that went over it and that helps from uh, making noise and uh, scraping on the top. Now this little clip here is kind of a bear to get out. And since it does look like it's the original, we may just break it. But I'll try not to. Now I get my special knot break tool out. There it came out. There it is. Got it. All right, cool. Uh, this is uh, our assistant, Seth Payton. He'll be pulling all the, uh, the one molding there 
free so we can get to the well. And you see the screws that go into the, uh, for that well. There'll be a screw right here behind us. Okay, we're going to go ahead and start pulling these tacks. First, we're going to go ahead and mark this tack strip here and uh, give us kind of a guideline of what's going on with it. Just a nice fine line. And then you mark the center of the hole. And that will give us a guideline when we get ready to put the new top on. Good shape. Now we're taking off the window assembly on this side. Now we're taking the main pad off. Get this all pulled off. Just a little tiny thing holding that. Now I'll mark this, mark the center of our holes here.
Something else you might want to tell them just for the idiots. Uh, you know, filming that, are you? <laughs> yeah, we got that. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you know which way's up on your bow and you don't lay it aside and then come back to it and flip it upside down. Well, this has a curve that goes this That's what way. I'm saying, so I'm just, just so they make sure they don't want to flip their bows around. Make it happen. Uh, I don't know, you have to be pretty stupid. <laughs> Coming out way too easy. It's all dried out and bad. So, going to this much extent Fence. Might as well just go ahead and pull that out. So we're going to be scraping the glue off, then we're going to come back and do a fine wire brush to it. Then we're going to paint it after we get these rivets, you get the rest of the tack rail out of here. Okay, we got most of this stuff cleaned up now, uh, with the exception of a few odds and ends, but we'll go ahead and finish them up. A lot of times, now that you got your top frame exposed and you can see all these joints and everything, uh, and all the moving parts, now is a good time to maybe shoot some oil in it. So, uh, be that said, we're going to go ahead and start uh, cleaning and uh, a little bit more cleaning and then we'll paint. And then next time you see it, the tack rail will be all in and uh, it'll be ready to have uh, parts installed on it. We'll let it set overnight to uh, bake and uh, for the glue to harden. And uh, when we come back in the morning, we'll start assembling. Okay, now that we've got our frame prepped, everything's all together. We put the new felt on the front. We've oiled all our joints, greased them a little bit, checked to make sure that they all move freely. We were lucky here. We only had to replace the left and right corners on the rear bow, and uh, the rest of it's all good. And as you can see, got the new tack strip here in the front, all laminated and good. We use Gorilla Glue and uh, it takes care of everything that needs to be taken care of. It adheres real good and it's easy to scrape off the uh, excess residuals that you'll get uh, when you put that stuff on because it does expand. So now we're ready to install our parts. Uh, we checked our bow height and uh, I don't remember what it is, 25. but 25 is 25. Right there. All the specs on the different things that you need to know about the tops, hours of installation, parts available. So we want to be 25 inches from the top And we need to move it up about right there and then just kind of double measure it here in the center and we got 25.
Okay, now we got everything perfectly set here. All our bows are nice and evenly straight. Checked uh, for a distance here. Bow set. First thing we're going to do is we're going to install our set of pads. So now we're going to make sure that uh, we install these pads in proper position. And uh, one thing nice about these pads, uh, they've got the plastic on there like the original. Here in a minute we'll go ahead and dial in where these holes are at. I'll go ahead and punch them out and then install the pad. Yeah. Now we got the holes marked, we're going to go ahead and take our Osborne hole punch here and punch these out. Now we got our pad set, we're going to go ahead and trim this off. I double checked it with my yardstick to make sure that we had 25 from the edge, leading edge, of the molding to the center of the tack rail. So now we're going to go ahead and trim this off, then we'll go ahead and do the other side, then we'll come back to do the quarters. But you want to make sure that when you trim the sack that you don't have it hanging over the edge. And don't worry about putting a lot of staples in there because we just spent a lot of time taking out staples that didn't need to be there. We use uh, stainless steel and uh, that way they're, uh, they're not going to rust. But uh, we make sure that uh, they're long enough, they're uh, half inches uh, into the rear bow. In the front bow we're going to drop down and we'll use quarter inch. Okay, now that we have got our pads almost on, we're going to go ahead and uh, clean up this rear quarter stick. And then uh, we'll figure out our marks and stuff, our measurements, and we'll go ahead and install it. Before we took the pad off, we put a mark on our stick where the uh, pad starts, and then it's going to fall wherever it falls back here. Nice about this pad, it has a contour here and uh, so we can follow relatively to be close and we may have to take it apart and reset it to make it uh, perfect but uh, we'll get it there when uh, we get uh, started tacking this on. Now we're going to go ahead and start from where our first mark was. And we're just going to put a tack in there and a tack at this end. And hopefully this will follow fairly good there. And we'll just see how much adjusting we're going to have to do. Okay, so this here being what it is, this here, and we're off a little. So I'm going to set this here 
Now I'll do the rest of my adjusting from inside. See, so I can lower that and that. That webbing that they use is a lot more forgiving. It'll got a biased stretch to it. So where I would have this now, it would have worked and it would have been fine. Just had to tighten it up a little bit. But with this being a little bit more boardier and a little bit more stiffer pad, thicker, uh, we're going to have to uh, adjust this. And we just need to move that over just a little bit. Okay, see there, uh, where that's set, and the way this thing here has to be, it actually is going past. That was off even farther than that, so we need to move over. Now, when I move this back where I want it, I'll move it right about there. Every once in a while, you're lucky and you can do it the first time. You noticed? Yeah, it looks smooth in that wrinkle. That's right. On that note, I'm going to go to lunch. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to trial fit this here in there and make sure that everything's lining up. There's an extra hole here, which means that rather than taking it out again, whoever did this before, and to do it right so we can use the original holes, they just elected to drill another hole in there. So I'm going to trial fit this, make sure that everything's uh, dead nuts on, and then uh, we'll go ahead and install this quarter pad. We've already trial fitted it, and now this hole lines up with the original factory hole, rather than dealing with a hole that somebody drilled in there because they were in too big of a hurry. And there it is. Now it's trial fitted. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and uh, put my mark and measure the other side, and it's at one inch. So I'm going to measure this one here at one inch, and that's where we're going to start the pad. And then uh, we'll go ahead and staple it on there. Put my marks in there. And that's all good. And hopefully we won't have to go through all the we did on the other side. Go ahead and check this in a minute. There we go. All right. Now we got this set in here, we can take out a little bit right in this area. So I'm going to mark it uh, with my marker and about how much I have to take out is really a guess because you can't get on the outside of the car to be able to get. So I'm going to figure probably three half inch I'll start with. You can always uh, cut away but you can never add. So any adjusting you do you always want to do it in small increments. So, yeah, probably about three quarters of an inch would probably do it. And I'm going to put a mark right about here. And then we'll come around to here. Because it's fitting good right here. I can live with this here. This will be fine, perfect, in fact. Not too taunt. 
not too loose it'll be just great and uh, we're gonna go ahead and take it back apart do the adjustment and hopefully uh, it'll be dead nuts on Okay, I made my marks. Kind of a reference mark here. This mark here is actually to tell me how far back this way I need to go. I'll go ahead and undo these staples. So I'll put a three quarter here and just have it taper down to nothing to here. Okay, now that we've got our quarter pads and everything all adjusted and put in there right, we're going to go ahead and uh, approach the uh, rear glass window and uh, get that installed. The marks that I did here are all going to be pertinent when I transfer this onto the uh, new glass and uh, window assembly. And so, as you can see, I got my chalk marks up there, everything's getting all dialed in. I uh, probably should make sure that I have a center mark somewhere around here. So we'll go right here. And then I'll double measure that, make sure that it is the center, but it looks like it is for the mark that they have on there. And then uh, we'll go ahead and cut all these and mark them and transpose it onto this. First of all, just lay it up there and kind of center it. The reason I marked this is because that's where my scissors are going to come in. I'm going to trim the edge of that. And my marks here are for where the holes are at. And then this is my center because that's what's put on the stick. And as you can see here, if you look at that little notch, see it's in the center. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut that chalk mark off. and. Uh, transpose this, get it ready to install. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and find the true center. And uh, this is the true center of this window that we thought. We're going to see just exactly how far off I was in thinking that. I was off quite a bit. That's about it right there. Okay, now we've marked our stick here, part of this rear glass assembly. And I marked the holes, marked where the leading edge of the tack rail is supposed to be. And as you can notice here, here's what the factory had. And this is just a guideline, so you just want to use it as such as a guideline. When we go to mark this out and put this on. Now, if this top, well, this car did not have a top on it when it came in here, we'd be taking hundreds of measurements and blah 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 but we have a good pattern I noticed that the top fit good when uh, they brought it in so we're going off that assumption that that window is the way it's supposed to be and uh, so we're going to just see how uh, well this pattern transposes into the car So hopefully this is going to fit, so I don't have to take it out again. Yeah. We'll have the uh, boss man here, give a handle here. Okay, I'm going to call it 61, which would be 30 and a half, correct? 
30 and a half. And what do you know? There's our mark, factory center mark, and it's 30 and a half. So that's the center. Oh, wow. We're that far down? I'm going that far up. That will give me room to mess around here. Well, we're going to go ahead and bolt the rear stick in now. See how close uh, we are. We're going to see just how good it really fits. We're going to bring our steamer in. This is one of the advantages that we have that you don't. Unless you spend like, I think you're $2,100 now. But uh, it'll uh, soften everything up, making it easy to stretch. So it makes your job look nice. Okay. Now we'll see how far we get to have to actually stretch this. So we're pretty good right there. And this here is looking good. Yeah. This will be okay once I pull this here, yeah. that there. But we got a little bit of a dibby here, so I will have to take it and drop it a little bit. I have to take this out anyway, so we'll do adjusting there. Yeah. And just kind of pull on it a little bit. You got it? Yeah. Okay. There you go. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Now that we got the rear window in. We're going to go ahead and uh, unbolt it. And uh, we're going to make our marks, of course, across the bottom here, like we did before with the pads and uh, where we need to tighten it up a little bit here because it's just too loose for my satisfaction. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do that now. And it looks like I'm going to go uh, half inch. On the uh, other one they had it probably Congo drum special because I noticed they had holes mm -hmm. in it right here. Yeah. And that was from being too tight. Yeah. I'd rather have them have a few just wavies because in 30, 40, 60 days they're going to be gone and it's going to be nice. Okay. We're marking the stick so I can get my half inch. So we're going to want to bring that down. I'm just going to put it right about there. I'm going to go ahead and trim this. See, this is where it was originally. Now, that's where I want it now. Now we're going to try to fit everything here together. Just need to do some adjusting. And it's good. Then we can start on the top in the morning. Now we're going to go ahead and put in the last of the little screws over here. And that's as far down as that's going to go. That's it there. I don't want to break them.
That's all good. Everything's all good. And we got the rear window squared to the car now. It's all installed. The pads are all nice. Quarter pads. And uh, now we're going to go ahead and proceed uh, putting the top on. On this uh, particular car, we wanted to make sure that the rear bow was squared to everything. So I put a measurement here and there, um, just a, a mark, and I make sure it's even from the body seams or some kind of reference point. It really doesn't matter, just as long as you're the same on both sides. So we know it's squared to the car, and uh, we'll uh, go ahead and start to uh, get the top and get it all marked out and ready to put on. Okay, we're going to measure this, and I like to uh, put a padding over this edge here because that's where a lot of them start to rot out we uh, buy this velcro and it's a sticky and we'll just go ahead and put that on there and it'll make it a lot softer once we get the top on and it'll help protect the top from the edge. We also padded the front header bow too, which is what they did in the factory. And uh, since we don't have uh, that stuff available to us anymore, we just put a felt line on the front. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, address the top. First thing we're going to do is we already checked everything out and made sure that there was no marks or imperfections on it. I'm going to run a line from here all the way over to here and that will keep this edge straight when I uh, go to attach it to the bow. Also I'm going to find out center. Now we're going to measure for the center. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to lay the old top on here because the old top did fit good. We're going to go ahead, cut it up, chop it up. And this is a uh, luxury if you've got a good old top for a pattern. Otherwise you're taking a whole bunch of measurements and looking at this video going, my gosh, I think I'll just pay and have somebody do it. We're trimming this off so that uh, it lays flatter. Anything you can do to make things a little bit easier. Now that mark I made on here, we're going to go ahead and cut right down to that mark. Why don't we do both of these now? Okay, now we're going to go ahead and lay this pattern onto the new top. We're going to see how close the factory is to their line. And uh, just by a glance here, it's not bad at all. So they're saying that the factory is there and there, so that's all good. Now I'm going to mark it, and here's where the old top was. I marked that, and then here's a hole, and here's another hole, and here's another hole. I'm going to take and move that. And you see, we're really close 
to what the factory line is. We're going to go ahead and use that. We'll double check this other side. And then the next time you see us, I'll have it uh, tacked to the center of the uh, real rail, uh, tack rail to the each side and then we'll see how it's fitting. How's it look? I'm, I got the flap under it. Okay, cool. This is what happens when you uh, get in a hurry. You want to be careful. Okay, now back. One more. Back. Okay, now move it yours about an eighth of an inch. A little bit more. Right there. Okay, now pull it back. be the center of that hole. You don't want to stretch it real, real tight. You just want it nice and snug. And come back over here. Good to me. It looks like it's gonna lay in there just fine. Now we're gonna trim this out. Go and try this at home. <laughs> That's a joke. Yeah. You can edit that out. Okay, let's drop this Rufford latch, but there it is. All right, check out all the wrinkles. Cool. That'll all work out. And this will all work out. I like it. Now, this is the part where We've got the uh, top sort of installed, and uh, it's looking good. There's a few wrinkles in here, but we're going to steam this, and it'll relax all this canvas, take the wrinkles out, shrink them where they need to be shrunk, and we're going to be in good shape. Just gonna set that in there for right now. Now what I'm doing now is making guide marks on this. We're also gonna check the flopper stopper. And the flopper stopper is right behind it, three quarters of an inch, and here I can pull this forward and I'll get this to stretch out of there. So we're good there, these quarter flaps, I'm going to put a mark right here, come underneath, and this is just a guideline, that's all this is, mark here. And a mark here. Go around to the other side and do the exact same thing. That's the top part. 
do the same thing over here like I said these are just guide marks and it'll do her and this stick has oblong holes in it and that's for adjusting forward and backwards so looks to me in all fairness we need to move the stick back when I go to put uh, finish this so I'm gonna file that away in my memory bank here, we'll just take it out this way. Okay. Just be careful not to drop it or break it. Oh yeah, that makes a big difference. Yeah. Okay, let's move it back. So we're going to glue the flaps now, everything that needs to be glued, and we're going to see how good our pattern was. go ahead and lift it up and we're going to glue the front real quick like take this back apart when we put our cables in. If I can get our cables out right now and nope, it ain't gonna fit in there. Yeah, we're hitting the back. So what I have to do is I have to bend this out and straighten it a little bit more. Mucho better. In the original, they use a little lead ball on the end, and the new ones they put an elongated fitting on the end of it to hold it in there. Now we're putting in the flopper stoppers, getting them just laid in there so we can install them.
we'll just drop it down a little bit and then steam it. Starting to hit resistance. Do some readjusting right here. get down in there, yeah. Ready. Yep, let's go ahead and latch it. It's latched. Hey, Richard. <laughs> The only thing I don't like about it is you can never get the dirt out of this. That's, That's dirt. Dead stamps. <laughs> don't be talking to me about dirt. <laughs> yeah, this will work out. This will be fine. That'll shrink out. I'll let that go. This is going to shrink a little bit, okay. so uh, we're we're okay. I can live with that there too, okay. but I will shoot a little steam, and uh, I'm not really crazy about shrinking them a whole hell of a lot. But man, this is going to look nice. Well, I'm happy with the way things are turning out. Top's going to fit. Going to be nice. Got a little few shrink wrinkles in here. We had to use a steamer. For you folks that don't got, you know, three thousand dollar piece of equipment laying around your garage, you can use a steam iron and a rag and a water bottle and put it on the low uh, setting so you're not burning your top, and you can get a lot of these wrinkles that we can take out in just a few seconds with the steamer. Um, take probably a half hour, maybe forty five minutes. But uh, it also helps to soften uh, the canvas that you're working with. The heat takes it, it makes it easier to do and makes it look a lot better. And uh, we're going to put the glass in the very next thing. Okay. You got it, Craig? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, and snap it. And we're going to pop this up a little bit so it relaxes it. For him when uh, right there. Now while he's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and start trimming all our side pieces. We need to do it. Yeah, right. Right there. From the center out. Yeah, it needs to be adjusted right here. Flip it around because they still have opposite of what the top came from the back. Mm. Okay, I'm going to have to take about uh, three quarters of an inch out of that yeah, puppy. Of, uh... Right there. That's right there. All the way to the end. Okay, now that we've got our mark. We're going to go ahead and, unfortunately, we had to readjust, so we'll go ahead and do that. And uh, we both concurred at about a half inch.
Looks beautiful in here. I am so happy. Okay, now we're getting ready to put this on and I don't like to run the screw completely through everything because there's no really sense in it. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the screw right there where our mark is. Now we'll cover it. We're going to make a pilot hole. And that finishes that edge off really nice. If you notice that when I was putting that screw in, I put my finger all the way around it to hold it secure in there. You don't want to slip off because if you do, you poke a hole in the top. And now we're going to trim this back where it needs to be trimmed. This was already pre-sewed, pre-made at the factory. Hopefully, it's going to go where it needs to go. No, nope. it's not. We're going to stretch this out the best we can, and then uh, hopefully, uh, we'll go ahead and install it. There it is. Okay, now that that's mounted, we'll go ahead and put on our metal front seal retainer. And now we have uh, Richard, who's going to help us, because he feels sorry for us. Oh, you found yours, right? Yeah. Okay. So we got those put on just like they were originally. Okay, well, we pretty much finished up late the other night, so there was a couple of little things we didn't quite cover as well as we could have. One of them was the liner that goes down in the what they call the well liner, where the top comes down in. It's pretty easy to install. We showed you how the rods go in the bottom of it. We have a steel rod that runs in them and it keeps them nice and taut. 
here from front and back of the car and we're gonna put those babies in there how about I put the right one in where it goes there Now we'll take the old one and transpose these holes and mark in it that. I'm going to measure center 55 right there to right there 27 and a half and there's our mark for the center Okay, with, as we showed you earlier, the rods that go in the bottom of the well liner, they just set in there, and then when you put this well liner in, they just hang. There's really nothing that they hook to. They just set down in there, and it just kind of gives it a little weight to hold it down. And then it's just got screws that go around, all the way around, and then there's screws that come into the back here on this chrome strip. Now, the chrome strip, this top should kind of go over the top of it on both sides, and then your screw goes through. And you can see here there's screws coming through. So this just kind of protects them. The seat covers it, but it, it just kind of goes over them. So that just about covers all of that. Just wanted to say a few things about putting the tops on, being that... Uh, I'm not a professional top installer and if it was a do-it-yourself project and you wanted to do it yourself, I'm still not sure even after all the knowledge I've had now of learning how to put one on that I would want to do it myself. It seems like there's a lot of measuring and a lot of, of trial and error and taking on and off and uh, it's uh, really kind of a, a handful to do even though it seems to be in theory pretty simple but uh, I, like I say, I don't think that I would want to attempt it by myself. Something else that you may want to consider, when we talked to Top and Trim initially, they gave me the quotes about putting the top on and, and stuff. They requested that we bring the car to them with the original top on. They also had the pads, the well liner, the cables were all part of the kit from Easy On. But when they talk about the flat rate for installing the top, that's what it is. It's the flat rate for installing the top. So you may want to consider asking questions for your installer about additional cost, if there is one for installing the pads or installing the well liner or the cables and or removing the old top. Uh, the guys at Top and Trim really wanted the old top on. It makes it easier for them to see and understand how the new top should fit. But uh, they can do it with the old top removed. But uh, So there may be the additional expense of removing a top. So make sure you ask all those questions of your installer up front. Well, there you have it. I want to thank Top and Trim for the professional installation they did. They really did a nice job, took their time very knowledgeable guys. Uh, they told me that they don't want the top to be put down for 30 days to put it in the sun and all these little wrinkles will work them way out as the top kind of shrinks but uh, we, we're really happy with the way it turned out and how it looks with the maroon paint. 